Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel, Esther is back and we are going to talk about that in detail because I made some videos yesterday and the day before talking about her using her in the cloister or PvE versus Growland and she was performing really well. So first, let's have a look to the banner. We have Esther, I'm going to talk about her right after but let's concentrate on the others. You have Aniru, this is one of the recent heroes we had on the new faction and I'm going to go directly to the game and I'm gonna try to explain what I I know about her. Uh, she is um, a great turn meta increase and a great support. She can lower the attack and the speed by 40% on the basic attack which is a great skill uh, to be honest especially if you want to target the faction abyss this is gonna help you a lot. In dungeons if you don't have all the broken heroes in the game of course she is gonna help you a lot because outside of giving only the 40% attack and the 40% speed down on the boss she can also heal a lot your heroes, increase your turn meta, especially if you have the exclusive 3, passively she's gonna do that, uh, this is a great hero for that, also she can apply a shield on your heroes if you have the exclusive 2, 45% of her max HP, and more, even more turn meta increase, passively this is gonna help you a lot, and heal again and reduce the cooldowns by one turn of all your heroes at each wave transition. So that's an, a really, really useful hero uh, in many contents in the game. But if, if you have all the broken heroes as Little Jack, Jack and Roll, uh, Nicholas, etc., don't expect to play her in dungeons. And in PvP, I don't think that she is really that useful, in fact. Because you are gonna have many heroes that are performing better than her. Maybe you can use her as a combo with Faxian, that guy, because he is gonna have a lot of turn meta increase depending on the exclusives you have on him at the beginning of the wave depending on the number of uh, heroes from the same faction in your team and he can also increase the turn meta of your heroes so using both a him and aniru in pvp might be a good combo to get a ton of turn meta increase and nice damage because he is also gonna give some damage to your heroes thanks to resolute 2 and uh, some damage by his own so it's up to you if you want to try more in depth using Aniru, but in my opinion she is a useful hero but clearly not the best one to have in every content. Then we have Space. No need to talk more in depth about Space, you already know about her potential. She is one of the best heroes for PvP in the game. But today you have a Popper who is more interesting than her in some specific cases. Because remember that if you have a Popper team in front of you with an Esther for example and also a Ronai, if you are using a Space in your team and if you have enough speed on your Space, in fact the same amount of speed on your Space than the Popper in front of you, uh, you will We'll cut the opponent and your space is gonna give turn meta to your heroes in between, in between and you are gonna be able to take the advantage. It depends on the speed on both your team and the opponent team though, but space can be really, really strong for that in PvP. In PvE, she is also great. If you need exclusives on her, she is gonna be an insane hero to use in the Endless Cloister. I'm using her personally uh, still today in high stages and I'm farming with that team in high difficulty stages of the endless cloister with that team. This is a quick example. Stage 37, one of the most tanky boss we have in the cloister. This is Thar Evolved and as you can see I was able to beat him on difficulty 37 using that team with space inside 297 turns in total because he has still 1 HP at, the, at that moment and I was to beat that boss using a space in my team so yes of course I'm still using space in end game today. She is a great hero and also for PvP you want her in your team definitely with all the exclusives on her. Then you have Grace in the banner. Uh, in my opinion, she is in she is nice, useful only for the Watering Coast and the Faction Abyss. So she is still useful though, don't, don't get me wrong, but uh, outside of that, I don't think that she can perform well and help you to clear some extra content. In the Watering Coast, this is the team I am currently using. I have a Valentina inside of the team. If you don't want, if you don't have her, you can replace her by Seth that guy 
or by Restore if you are not using him in another team. So using that team with full bleeds is gonna deal a lot of damage to the boss. Her um, advantage is to give a ton of extra bleed damage to your team over time. She can also heal a lot your heroes and apply a consolidation too, which is gonna help you a lot in that content and in the faction abyss. Let me just show you the score of my bleed team. So I'm ranked number 9 at the moment because I don't like to wait and I was only Diamond 3 when I did my runs. And I'm doing everything in auto because I am lazy. <laughs> Don't judge me. Uh, this is Valentina and the team here with Grace and I was able to reach almost 1 billion damage using that team. That was a great shot. She is really really powerful to increase your bleed damage and in the faction abyss if you have a look to the holy light parliament I was able to clear the stage 30 using that team and if you check the lineups of everybody else they all have Grace in the team. She is an amazing hero for that content. Outside of that, uh, she is bad in uh, PvP, uh, don't expect to play her anywhere in PvP, and in Dwarven Ruins, neither. She is gonna be a bad hero for that content. Maybe early game, if you want to beat stage 30 or between 30 and 35, depending on the heroes you are gonna have, because he's gonna take more bleed damage, so maybe you can try to build a team using both her and Nidrold or Lissander, and so you are gonna deal interesting damage to the boss not super high damage but still interesting ones and finally you have Betelgeuse um, I'm not using him I, I never used him he needs exclusives and even with exclusives I don't think that he is gonna be such an interesting hero to play uh, both in PvP and PvE he is gonna suck hard uh, in fact some players used him to clear one stage in Faction Abyss the last one uh, so I'm gonna show that to you uh, directly uh, in the Foresters stage 30 uh, this is the teams that people used and if you as you can see there is no Betelgeuse for now there is one there because he can lower the attack of the boss which can help so this is Betelgeuse the fact is that he's gonna apply HP up to only on himself and this is bad if he was doing that to your team it would be way better but in fact he is a selfish hero uh, applying that buff only to himself HP up to is a great buff to have especially in that content but sadly he doesn't apply it to other heroes attack down 40% it can help a lot but remember that you also have four nail to do that and furthermore apply a speed down 20% on the boss and many shields so in my opinion Fornail is better to use uh, than Betel Juice in that content. He can also increase your attack by 40% on all your heroes if I'm not mistaken, yes, all, all, all your heroes and defense up too so he can still be useful especially if you don't have Luna for the content. So I was able to clear that content, I'm gonna show you a, a video soon talking about that, how I was able to beat the stage 30 of the Foresters, but I was using limited hero jingle bells, so it might not be that interesting for everyone, but still a, a useful video, I guess, or at least by curiosity, you can watch it, it can be, in, uh, it can be nice to see, in fact, I guess. In terms of PvP, nobody is using Betelgeuse. Uh, he has an, inter an interesting mechanic, pr pretty useful one. Every time he's gonna get a hit, he's gonna remove, steal one buff from the opponent who attacked him. It can be uh, useful in many situations, but uh, today you have Lydia who does that in mass. I mean, everybody is attacking your heroes, your entire team, and they are all uh, stealing the buffs of everyone else in front. So Betelgeuse is not just working well in that context. In terms of epic heroes, we are gonna have great ones, Sinov, Deschanel, Olivia and Winona, Winona. So let's talk about Sino first. Great hero to use in the game. Even in endgame you can try to use her of course. I'm gonna show that to you in a moment. Tower of Mark, Green Tower, you can use your Sino inside. Uh, this is gonna help you so much. In fact she can lower the speed of everyone in AoE by 40%. On the ultimate she can freeze enemies who are already under freeze uh, on them, under speed down sorry. She can heal a lot your heroes, apply a 
shield, increase the turn meta, lower the turn meta of enemies, apply speed down 20% on the basic attack. She is a great hero to have in that content. In PvP, she can also help you a lot, especially in uh, advanced arena, early and mid game, in the championship, in one specific team, and in fair arena. She is a great hero for that, she is really versatile. Uh, I'm gonna uh, try to explain to you, for example. And let's say I'm gonna pick that team. Okay, there is no control hero in front. There, there we go. We have a Nazil. And normally you want to use your Pauline to counter Nazil, right? But your Pauline is gonna increase the turn meta of your team. But if you don't have Pauline, try to use Sinov instead versus heroes who can freeze your team. Uh, you are gonna put your Sinov and then you wanna use your Catherine. You are gonna use Catherine. Catherine or Turk. I love using both. If you are doing that, she is immune to freeze and speed down. So if the opponent is trying to apply a speed down or a freeze on her, she's gonna get some turn meta increase. And if you have a lot of speed on her, then she's gonna play before the hero who cleanses in your team and she's gonna get extra turn to your heroes all over the turn meta of enemies and their speed. And then you are gonna be able to cleanse with your Turk, with your Catherine, with your other heroes who can cleanse. She is a great hero for that. And she is also an amazing hero for the Dragon Tribe Faction Abyss. Uh, you want to use her in your team, she's gonna increase a lot your turn meta, manipulate the turn meta of the boss, lower his speed by 40%, and it's gonna help you so much. Even on waves, it's also gonna help you. She is a really, really strong epic hero even today. And then you have the Chanel. The Chanel is interesting only for the Forgotten, she's gonna be useful in that content, uh, but it's gonna depend on the heroes you have. For example, if you have an Esther, Use Esther instead, she's gonna heal better than uh, the Chanel and give more utilities to your team. But the Chanel is really strong versus that content because she can increase your turn meta, she can uh, um, silence waves, she can apply a silver wand, it can be used against the Gwyneth, this is gonna help you a lot. 80% less HP um, restoration on bosses, this is gonna be so great. She can heal a lot and that's why in that team if you don't have Esther she's gonna be great because you don't have many healers in the team. You have also the epic hero Yar that can be great in that content. And early game you can use her in PvP because she can increase your turn meta. So it can be a solution to take the turn before the enemy. Especially if you are using a space, a space and her in the same team you are gonna get a lot of turn meta increase and so you can take advantage of that. Then you have Olivia, and she is a great hero for the Faction Abyss and maybe also for the Tower of Mark if you don't have better solutions. T uh, uh, Faction Abyss, great for her speed up 20% on your heroes and turn meta increase. She can also uh, protect one of your hero in the team, the weakest one, uh, by sharing some damage with him. And she can apply a defense buff and a shield on your heroes, which is gonna help you a lot and also in attack down 20% on the basic attack, which means that in the Faction Abyss she is gonna be really useful if you check the last stages, if you check the teams that were able to beat the boss, uh, normally you should find some Olivia inside, look at that, L Olivia to clear the stage of 30, this is an epic hero only and she is played in many many different teams to beat that boss. And I use her, so use her also if you have her. And finally we have Winona, Winona, I don't even know how to pronounce it. She is a recent hero and nobody is talking about her but I might want to try her in PvP versus Sun Wukong teams because you know what? She is going to be she's going to deal some dot damage, both burn and internal injury and also she has a buff, a unique buff applying to your heroes to increase the uh, damage you are going to do on the stance value to enemies. And so it might be a way to destroy the stance value of Sun Wukong in front faster than usual and if you do that you are going to take advantage over uh, Sun Wukong teams uh, and Sun Wukong we won't be that efficient in, in front also she has also more damage to uh, enemies with a stance uh, to their stance value and so in my opinion she can be really useful to destroy the stance of enemies of the new faction in PvP. Uh, don't expect to play her in PvP in PvE because her kit doesn't seem to be that well but remember that she can also apply an attack up 40% on your heroes and probably it can work in a team with Sun Wukong to beat Sun Wukong teams in front. I might want to try that by curiosity. 
Okay, now let's quickly talk about Esther. You are gonna understand why she is really great in PvE and maybe one of the only hero you need to push higher stages in the Endless Cloister today. This is the stage 32 and I'm pretty sure that I can beat the stage 34 and 35 maximum maybe. No, the 36 I'm gonna need way more damage. So if you have crazy stuffs on your account better than I, then you are gonna be able to push higher stages. Uh, personally, I tried the 37 and I was stuck, maybe I was able to inflict 40% HP on the boss within 300 turns but on the save 35 if you are using Esther and Jack and Roll instead of Mamuk, this is why she's gonna be great. First reason she can lower the cooldown on your uh, on the hero of your choice. If you are using her in auto she's always gonna target the hero with the highest amount of damage and so in that case she is gonna always target my Jingle Bell and this is great she's gonna apply uh, more damage give more damage to my jingle bell and more piercing rate and so my jingle bell is going to be able to ignore a huge part of the defense of the boss and deal high direct damage this is the only way to beat efrit in the endless cloister uh, especially in high stages uh, also she can revive your heroes passively every time she's going to cast the yellow egg and this is why she is that great look at that sometimes i don't have the damage immunity on my heroes and so this is why is gonna happen. The boss is just one-shotting my entire team, not Mamuk though because he is immune to uh, death thanks to Immortal and it, my Nordak had damage immunity but thanks to the yellow egg my uh, all my teammates were revived passively. It can happen multiple times during the fight and this is how you can beat this kind of boss. And you can also use her versus Growl and 40 in PvE. Of course it is gonna work. I'm still using her in the same kind of team. Using Nicolas that time because he can also freeze enemies. And that's helped a lot. Also with the speed down and the speed up on your heroes and the apples just in case. But you know what? She can revive your heroes. So maybe you can even replace Nicolas by another hero in the team if you have Esther. Who knows? I, did, I never tried that. I should try. So uh, she is also great because she's gonna give... A extra turns and extra damage to my jingle bell and so she's gonna start doing insane amount of damage on the boss. Look at what she's gonna do in one hit only if I can find one attack. This is not the best attack. One more time, this is a, the video of yesterday so you can have a look to it if you have if you want to have more details. Look at that, 185 turns to clear Growlin 40 in auto. She is an amazing hero. And you know what? She is more than interesting for PvP for many reasons. If you have a Lydia in front of you, she is the direct counter to Lydia. Especially when Lydia is in a tanky team and when she is gonna open with her ultimate. She all heroes in front of you are gonna begin start uh, stealing your buffs, right? But you know what? When she is in egg form, every time enemies are uh, stealing, removing your buffs, you are gonna lower their turn meta and by a lot. That means that if you have Esther in your team versus a Lydia tanky team, you are gonna reduce a lot their turn meta and get a huge advantage over them. Second reason, sometimes when you have a Lydia opening with the ultimate, she is gonna inflict in prison on your heroes and for example, if you have an in prison on your damage dealer, uh, you can't increase his turn meta or, or give him extra turns. And using her with the blue egg at the beginning, she is gonna cleanse the in prison, and then you are gonna be able to deal great damage because you are gonna be able to give him a turn. And that's game changer for PvP. Another reason, when you have the yellow egg in PvP, she can revive, of course. And when you have the red egg, she is one of the only hero that is able to increase a ton the direct damage of your Melchior, for example, and you are going to be able to kill this kind of t annoying team with Sun Wukong inside. You know what? That's not everything. She can also increase a lot the turn meta of your heroes and she has the same turn meta increase at the beginning of the fight than Asindo and Popper. And so it gives you a huge advantage and also she can heal a lot and protect your damage dealer because she's gonna apply on him a huge shield. And this is what you can use in PvP to be this kind of annoying team. My Lydia is granting me some attack up, I got imprisoned, so I'm gonna use that skill with my popper. He's not imprisoned, so I'm gonna uh, remove some buffs. 
lower their 10 meta and defense if I can. And look at that. I'm in prison with my Melkio. I'm going to transform, apply the blue egg. You need the exclusive 3 to play two times in a row with her. Otherwise, it will never work. And now I can give the extra turn to my Melkio. He has some more damage thanks to Esther. And just basically, I can use my skill and say bye-bye to the team in front. Of course, you are also going to need to have a lot of auras and stats on your Melkio to increase even higher your damage and be able to do that. So that was all about the banner. You have also the trial match in which you can acquire one copy of uh, Esther. So if you are planning to, to get her, if you want to spend to get her, don't remember that you can still use my promo code today. It's going to be the last day of February. You are going to get 5% more cashback on all your purchases in Infinite Magic Rate. So don't forget to use my promo code if you want to get more cashback and save more money. This day is the last day of the promotion. So that was all for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If it's the case, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Have a really nice day and see you in the next video. Bye bye.